Blog Talk Radio. Transition. 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 The process Transition. of change from one condition to another. We are now, we are now at a new crossroads cross where, where change is evident, is evident once, once again. Once again. What does what not does serve not us serve must, must transform us anew. Returning, Returning to our to original, original state of oneness one one and true nature of that, of that which created who we truly are. are. Confusion, Confusion was the way of the past. Enlightenment is the way of the now and future. Shedding the layers of the sea. We now bring you the transformation of the two who started as one. Our fearless plan never stands still. Earth has been in a process of transition. We are not exotic to the most remarkable upon Welcome to Transitions Radio. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Mark Angelo Cummings, your host. And I am Lena Lopez, your hostess. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful land of enchantment, Silver City, New Mexico. At this time, we wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors, TheBreastFormStore.com. They have everything you can imagine to enhance your feminizing needs. As well as Spunk Lube, which is an award-winning personal lubricant that's glycerin-free, non-staining, 100% sex toy safe with all materials, and it's fun to use. It's available in Spunk Lube Hybrid, Spunk Lube Tink, and our favorite, Spunk Lube Pure yeah. Silicone. Visit their website at spunklube.com to check out their amazing line of products. Use the code tr and then receive a 10% discount. If you enjoy our show, please tell your friends and neighbors. Share our website and donate if you can. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us. And as you see, we have a new intro, a new facelift. Transition Radio is taking on a different approach to things in life. There is an exciting change going on in our universe. And there's a lot of information that many of you may not know that we want to bring to you so we could all learn together and grow as spirit beings that we are. Today is Wednesday, and what we're doing is Mondays, Wednesday and Fridays, we're going to have different topics of the day of the week. Monday is going to end up being current events and the supernatural, the paranormal, things of that nature. Wednesday is going to be anything revolving around health and fitness, giving you information of things that you need to know that's out there, the latest information about the dangerous and toxic things out in your environment or in your kitchen. And on Friday is going to be spirituality as well as information regarding relationships. So tune in every day of the week and you will receive different information from us we will uh, have a TV show eventually, and we're going to start actually interviewing a lot of the locals here in Silver City and bringing you amazing stories of individuals all over the world and spectrum. Well, we wanted to talk to you today a little bit about GMO. Maybe a lot of you have heard of the word GMO and are not quite familiar with what it is. We want to give you the skinny behind it. There's a former pro-GMO scientist which speaks out on the real dangers of genetically engineered foods. It reads, I retired 10 years ago after a long career as a research scientist for Agriculture Canada. When I was on the payroll, I was a designated scientist of my institute to address public groups and reassure them that genetically engineered crops and foods were safe. There is, however, a growing body of scientific research done mostly in Europe, Russia, and other countries, imagine that, showing that Diets containing engineered corn or soya causes serious health problems in laboratory mice and rats. I don't know if I was passionate about it, but I was knowledgeable. I defended the side of technological advance, of science and progress. In the last 10 years, I have changed my position, however. I started paying attention to the flow of public studies coming from Europe, some from prestigious labs and published in prestigious scientific journals that question the impact and safety of engineered food. I refute the claims of the biotechnology companies that their engineered crops yield more, that they require less pesticide applications, that they have no impact on the environment, and of course, that they are safe to eat. There are no long-term feeding studies performed in these countries to demonstrate the claims that engineered corn and soya are safe. All we have are scientific studies of Europe and Russia 
showing that rats-fed engineer food die prematurely. These studies show that proteins produced by engineer plants are different than what they should be. Inserting a gene in a genome using this technology can and does result in damaged proteins. The scientific literature is full of studies showing that engineered corn and soya contain toxic or allergenic proteins. Genetic engineering is 40 years old. It is based on the, na native under the naive understanding of the genome based on the one gene, one protein hypothesis of 70 years ago that each gene codes for a single protein. The Human Genome Project, completed in 2002, showed that this hypothesis is wrong. The whole paradigm of the genetic engineer technology is based on a misstanding. Every scientist now learns that any gene can give more than one protein and that inserting a gene anywhere in a plant eventually creates what they call rogue proteins. Some of these proteins are obviously allergenic and toxic. One argument I hear repeatedly is that nobody has been sick or died after a meal or a trillion meals since 1996 of GMO food. Nobody gets ill from smoking a pack of cigarettes either. But it is sure can add up, and we did not know that in the 1950s before we started our wave of epidemic of cancer. Except this time it is not about a bit of smoke. It's the whole food system that is in concern. The corporate interest must be subordinated to the public interest, and the policy of substantial equivalence must be scrapped as if it's clearly untrue. Now, I know that I've watched many documentaries, and I've seen a lot of people asked on the street, they did like a little study, and they asked people, do you know what GMO is? And a lot right. of people have no clue. They don't realize that the majority of their stores, including Walmart, the majority of the food is GMO products. Right. Now, in a nutshell, what is GMO? GMO are genetically modified foods. They're foods that their molecular components have been altered. What happens when you alter molecular component of any substance? The body needs to then create cells to deal with this new product that you're putting in. And what is cancer? Abnormal cells. Is that kind of the same thing that happens when we microwave our food? Oh, yes. I mean, we're changing the molecular component, even when we cook food in the regular fashion. Right. Like, like uh, vegetables. Exactly. We're changing the molecular component, which in the end, it's taking away the nutritional value, and it's adding risk to your body because your body does not recognize the coding. Everything is coding with your body. There's receptors. There's enzymes. People don't realize that all these foods that we put in our bodies have been altered, and they're no longer natural, and they're no longer good for you, and they're actually very detrimental to our health. Well, the question that we should pose to the United States government is why haven't tests been done? Well, if the answer to that is very, very easy. Uh, everything's run based on corporation, and money is the root I of mean, all evil. I mean, Monsanto start off as a pesticide company? Oh, yes. These individuals, and if people do their homework on Monsanto, they'll realize that these individuals are evil, extremely evil. But they're big giant. You can't fight a big giant. Okay, you know, so, but if you take control of what makes a seed a seed, and modify it to the point of where you are the only one who can control its dispersion or, you know, its production, doesn't that, in effect, state that you are in control of the food supply? Yeah, exactly, and who's in control of the food supply controls the world. That is their master plan, Right. which is scary. And most people need, we need to become totally educated and need to stop purchasing these GMO foods. Other countries don't allow GMO foods, but the United States of America is in bed with big business big pharma, and we know that they don't look after our best interests. People think the government looks after them. They right. do not. The FDA does not look after people. No, I, I read something where they said that a typical can of mushrooms, that the FDA, what they allow for their health quota to be met, they allow like 13 to 17 maggots yeah. inside a can. Yeah, and the same thing goes for milk. The uh, cows, while they're in the milk factory, produce pus from having these machines on their nipples and being... That is so gross. They allow X amount of pus in milk. So people are drinking pus when they drink milk. It's I, I didn't thing. realize, though, that, that actually dairy, you know, farm cows are actually constantly being made to feel like they're pregnant. Yeah, because that's the only way you produce milk. Same thing if a human mother 
produces milk when she's pregnant. Human mother do not produce milk when they're not pregnant. Same right. thing goes with any animal. You have to induce that pregnant state. So they're stressing they're the animal stressing out. They're stressing out, man. They're adding antibiotics and all these steroids and all these things that we are consuming happily, not realizing this is what's causing disease. But let's shift gears here a little bit. Not only are what we're putting in our bodies creating diseases, but a purse that women carry around. No way. Uh, yeah, just a purse. Just a purse. But, you know, I always Come said, on. like, some women carry around these huge purses that not only hurt their body mechanics because it's yeah, heavier. Yeah, that's personal. Uh, well, it's true, though. Their backs get all messed up. I mean, you're carrying one side of your body heavier than the other, and you're carrying all this stuff. But not only is that body mechanic all thrown up, you are carrying around a lot of bacteria. Go ahead and read a little study here. Well, right. there was a study that was performed on women's purses. A health team went to a local mall and took samples from the bottom of 50 women's purses. The purses were swabbed with cotton swabs along the entire bottom of the purses and placed into special containers. The swabs were then processed at a local laboratory. The health report also showed where women placed their purses, public restrooms, on the floor beside the toilet, kitchen counters and the kitchen tables, on tables and chairs in restaurants, etc. Guilty. The results of the laboratory test contain the following most serious results. One out of four purses carry E. coli. That is scary. You know, we Cubans had this uh, superstition thing, and now I see where it comes from. They always tell you never put your purse on the floor because you're going to end up losing money. So I guess that's what they meant. You end up getting E. coli, you're going to have a major doctor bill. Well, I mean, the other day, you know, at a restaurant, I had to put my purse down. I mean, so where does it go? Well, that was on a chair. Yeah, yeah. You know, where does it go? Yeah, that it's I mean, it's not like you can go hang it up at the purse closet. I think we need to invent a new type of purse where women are able to either put it in their, like, a little backpack or something. The with bra it, uh, purse. The bra purse or something. Because it, <laughs> carrying around all that stuff, really, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Plus, now you know that it's also causing a lot of diseases. Well, I mean, the other... Serious bacteria that was listed was like hepatitis. That's scary. So what's the answer? That is pretty scary. Hepatitis, which they usually say it's either transmitted sexually or it's uh, blood exchange and all that stuff. So now, you know, you could be a mother carrying hepatitis in your person, bringing it to the house and spreading to the rest well, of the family. They're saying, like, if you have sandals that you wear and you don't put them on the table then you shouldn't put your purse on the table as well because your purse goes wherever your shoes go, basically. And that's pretty gross. So there's like you do. Typically you see women coming in from grocery shopping or whatever and they end up putting their purse right on the table or the rest of the family eat or even on the counter where she's right. cutting up the food. And right, stuff. And, and there's blood all over the place, you know, and other things out there, bacteria and stuff. So, yeah, I think that, you know, it's really dangerous, especially if women put their purses down I mean, I always hook it up on the stall, you know, just hook it. Right. You know, it's pretty safe there, but they say that a lot of women put their purses down by the toilet. You know when you're flushing, all the bacteria in the bowl, the particles go up. So and you he, can't see it. And you can't see it. So even when you're flushing, you think you're putting your purse up there so and say there's all this bacteria that's probably there on the door from all, airborne from all the flushing. I mean, people don't think of these things. Yeah. They no, really it's, don't. It's really... It's really scary. So what they do recommend you do is to wipe it down, like with a with a handy with a wipey, you know, and stuff, and try to clean it off, you know. And that goes for backpacks and briefcases, anything that makes a contact with the floor, you know, it's dangerous. Talking about bathroom, my own guys don't carry purse unless they carry a man purse. But one of the things I noticed as a transgender man when I started going to the bathroom is guys sit there, they use their urinal, they they end up doing the thing with their pecker there, yeah, and they don't yeah. even go wash their hands. So now they've got all this urine bacteria in their hands, and they're touching doorknobs, and they're doing stuff. So And that could follow you to the grocery store, oh, which yeah. is our next topic, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Shopping cart bacterial danger. Oh, my gosh. So now not only is it dangerous with purses and stuff, but the typical regular, you know, going to the grocery store is dangerous too. Because ever since the invention of the shopping cart during the dirty 30s, it altered how consumers shop for groceries by removing the weight of accumulated goods from the equation. So now you've got like 
all these things going on with a shopping cart. Right, and it's pretty scary stuff, you know, yet um, according to a four-year study conducted at the University of Arizona Environmental Research Lab, sponsored by Clorox, groceries carts are vertebral petri dishes teeming with human saliva, mucus, urine, fecal matter, as well as the blood and juices from the raw meat. Yikes. Swaps taken from the handles and child seats of 36 groceries Carts in San Francisco, Chicago, Tucson, and Tampa showed these common surfaces to rank third on the list of the nastiest public items to touch, which only playground equipment and the arm nest of public transportation producing more disgusting results. I mean, so when we go to the like to the store and then we get those wipes, it's we only do usually the handle. The one handle. <laughs> but where do the little bottoms, the little little infants go yeah right next to our veggies yeah and our fruit you know because that's usually where you put that it's yeah. like right down there you know what's a good idea now that they're giving everybody or i don't know about all the parts of the united states these recyclable bags is for people to put their food in the recyclable bags and then you know use then, that as their to put stuff in oh, yeah. and then take it out and put it on the, oh, and then you're actually putting on the conveyor belt and God knows what other bacterial oh, stuff because they're supposed to spray it down every so often because right. of the juices of the meat and the salmonella and the chicken and all that. But they never they never clean carts, I don't think. No. I mean, it, they sit outside, yeah. a bird can poop on it, yep. a cat can crawl on it and exactly. sleep on it, but nobody thinks that, you know, oh, I need to wipe it off. And we, and we wonder why we get all these diseases. Bacteria create a lot of viruses as well. It's like we don't know with the spread of cancer if it's all due to the chemicals we're ingesting or just bacteria that become cancers in our bodies. Yeah. There's not oh, enough yeah. long-term studies on these things. And actually, it's kind of freaky. I mean, I could see everybody now and then up going wearing mask and gloves when we go to the store. Like when, <laughs> when it was like the bird flu and stuff and people yeah. had masks on and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So if all these bacteria doesn't kill you, then obviously the junk food that you're eating on a daily basis, which actually is deadlier than war, genocide, and famine. Wow. Yeah. You may already know that junk food is bad for your health. Duh. Yeah, that's a given. <laughs> but you may not realize how bad it can be. A new study from the School of Medical Sciences at Australia's University of New South Wales, apparently not the United States. Oh, bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> um points to profound brain changes that junk food causes, making a junk food habit, quote, more deadly than war, famine, and genocide. Say what? Yep, the food war is real. And though the UNSW study was conducted on rats, why do they always use this poor little rat? Because they're mammals, I guess. I guess, yeah. yeah. Little that's brain poor thing. I definitely would not want to be, come back as a rat. Yeah. The brain changes observed matters to us humans. As mammals, we share similar brain functioning in the orbitofrontal cortex, which is the front of your brain, the part of our gray matter responsible for sensing and evaluating the pleasurable aspect of food. Makers of junk food know it is highly addictive. Of course. Isn't that crazy to think that they do They do it on purpose. But the UNSW study proves unequivocally that junk food alters behavior by causing near permanent changes in the brain's reward circuiting and alteration that can trigger obesity. You know that commercial where you can't just eat one yeah, trip, once you pop, you just can't, can't stop. stop. Yeah, and it's true, and this is why we have this obesity. Well, the study Astra concluded, we observed that rats fed a cafeteria diet for two weeks showed impaired sensory-specific satiety, which means getting full, following consumption of a high-calorie solution. The deficit in expression of sensory-specific satiety was also present. I'm probably saying that all wrong because I'm Cuban. Satiety, satiety. Satiety. Okay. Satiety. There you go. It was also present one week following the withdrawal of cafeteria foods. And that's the food that our kids eat. Thus, exposure to oxygenic diets may impact upon neural circuitry involved in motivated control of behavior. So here it is. While mammals develop a natural trigger over our evolutionary history, which prevents us from overeating, a phenomenon termed, quote, sensory-specific satiety, unquote, the consumption of junk food overrides this natural kill switch that allows us to regulate the calories we consume. So what can one do to counterbalance this literal food war? Start by eating unprocessed foods in organic form. It's really that simple. 
Then we're doing. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the whole key, um, and we'll discuss that as soon as I finish reading the remaining blurb here. That any growing and growing your own food is essential. Eating better is the best weapon against the corporate coop, which has us eating toxic chunks straight into the hospital. And people don't realize they they don't want to believe that they're these corporations are out there to make a profit, and they don't care how sick you are. Because then the pharmaceutical companies, of course, get to provide you a pill right. not to heal you, to keep no. you barely alive, because then that pill gives you another slur of tons of side effects, and it's a vicious cycle. So I wrote something today on Facebook that in, in, that we are responsible for our health. What we put in our bodies, what creates diseases or like thereof. Our bodies are amazing machines, and if we put something in our body that's going to decrease our immune response, is going to create all sorts of stressor in every cell in our body, then, of course, you're going to get sick. Of course, yeah. And this is something that we're seeing day in and day out, and it's, it's something that can be changed by not consuming these types of food, by not giving your money to companies that produce GMOs, this high corn fructose syrup, right. you know, all these horrific chemicals that are being used to preserve food. If food doesn't go bad in a few days and it's got too many chemicals and your body does not eat it. So if, does, if it doesn't rot, you know, don't eat it. Exactly, because then it's got something in there that's not meant to be in there. I mean, all these dyes and preservatives and I come from the syrup and uh, what is that other, um, not good to me, but uh, what was that we were talking a while ago? Oh, um, what is the one? Oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, glu- uh, uh, gluten, oh, sorry. Gluten. Yeah, yeah. gluten free, buy stuff that's gluten free. I mean, all these kids with ADHD and uh, Asperger or autism, these individual types of food actually exacerbate the disease and makes it worse. You well, change their diet, you change the behavior. Here's what the doctor, the lead author of the UNSW study said. She said, quote, as the global obesity epidemic intensifies, advertisements may have a greater effect on people who are overweight and make snacks like chocolate bars harder to resist. Professor Margaret Morris, another UNSW team member, added, it's like you've just had ice cream for lunch, yet you still go and eat more when you hear the ice cream van going by. It's no wonder that we're facing a global obesity epidemic. The United States is the epicenter of this troubling phenomenon with two out of three Americans being clinically overweight or obese. And if we check the numbers against the historical atlas of the 20th century, 203 million people died in the last century from war and oppression, including military and collateral civilian casualties from conflicts, genocide, politicide, um, mass murders, and famines. This equates to an average of two million deaths a year. But the junk food habit kills more. Even at the humble and likely most modest estimation of the World Health Organization, at least 2.8 million people die annually from diseases linked to obesity, including heart disease, diabetes, and brain stroke. These are things that could be avoided if people learn how to eat correctly and would stay away from these junk food and all these foods that are killing them. I think they're killing us on purpose. Oh, I believe I so. The population I, is just too much I believe on the planet, so. but they want to wipe out a certain amount. I don't know. And people are just so dead asleep watching TV, drinking the fluoride in their water, and they're being dumbed down every day more and more. Just corn syrup. It's oh, yeah. everything. Yeah, it's you can't avoid it unless you buy natural fruits and vegetables that are organic and make your own salad dressing and make your own stuff. I mean, I know it takes a lot more work, but it's better for your health. Right. And in the long run, you know, it might add an extra 30 minutes in the kitchen, but, hey, to feel good and be disease-free, it's well worth it. I believe anyway. I think, I think we're going to also talk about GMO fruits and vegetables that they're starting to use, you yeah. know, like – the grape isn't really supposed to not have any seeds in it. It's yeah. for our convenience, but a grape should have seeds. Yeah, there's a lot of fruit nowadays that they're making seedless, and that's watermelon. Like, exactly, and that is like abnormal. You need to eat things that are natural. Everything has seed in it, and if you're eating something that's been modified, your body is not going to react to it very happily. I mean, there's even an apple they're talking about that can't even brown. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's not out yet. And people think it's like, wow, this is great. Arctic apple, I think. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, anyway, we... uh, 
Just want to provide you all with a lot of great information week after week. We'll keep you up to date with all the brand new news and information out there and studies to keep you healthy and keep you aligned. And physical health is great, but spiritual health is something that's so very important. So today's Wednesday affirmation reads, practice rather than preach. Make of your life an affirmation defined by your ideals. Not the negation of others. Dare to the level of your capability, then go beyond to a higher level. It is so important to practice being in a space of positive energy. People don't realize that everything around us is based on energy. Our cells run on energy. Bodies have a meridian system. Everything outside of nature has energy. There's the male energy. There's the female energy. There's good energy. There's bad energy. There's just Everything runs in a form of frequency. And in order to have health, you need to be in that right balance energy source, that right frequency. Religion doesn't teach us that. Religion teaches fear, teaches us guilt, all sorts of stuff, to hate one another. And one of the things that humanity needs to start doing now that we're transitioning to a new evolution is to empower themselves. Stop giving their powers away. And we're going to talk about all these different things in the upcoming shows. Actually, Friday is going to be the spirituality and relationship session of our show. That one is going to be good. That's going to be an awesome There's show. There's a lot there. A lot there. And then people don't want to believe, but it is the way it is. I just think that it's important that we embrace the whole of ourselves and not compartmentalize ourselves into like if we're feeling down or something and really in touch with our emotions, we can't let that control the rest of us and how we respond to the world around us or to our own selves. And that's the way we've been taught. You know, we've been taught to fear depression, pop a pill, and or just sit there and bathe in this terrible feeling because it's almost like a self-pity party that we try to, Throw ourselves. Yeah. And it's like, feel it, own it, let it go. If you can't do something about that and change it, then what good is it harboring in your brain? And just like, it's like a nagging voice in your head that goes on and on to the point where you just become paralyzed and don't want to get out of bed and don't want to face the world. You've got to put it to the side. Even a memory, even if it's something that you experienced, you know, and you're reminiscing and stuff. I mean, what's wrong with that? It's very wrong because you're taken away from the present moment. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not here. All we have is the now. And you notice when you go back to certain memories, memories trigger a thought. And that thought triggers an emotion. And that emotion can destroy you. And that is energy. And that is energy. And that releases somehow, you know, out of our bodies and into the, you know, and it, society. Yes, that too. And it also affects your cell. Every cell in your body responds to how you feel. That old saying, as above, so below. So how you're feeling outside of you affects the inside of your body, your health. So there's no use on thinking about something that happened yesterday and continue to worry about it. Unless you could do something to change it and make it better, then there's no use to continue just to – literally, you're, you're driving yourself crazy with these thoughts, and then you become depressed, and you don't want to get out of bed, and then – it's just a vicious cycle. And then you eat too much or you drink too much or you end up popping all sorts of medication. It's like if you can't take care of it, you know, you feel it, you own it, you let it go. So in my Christian upbringing, there was a saying that was spoken, and it was let go and let God. Exactly, exactly. For those that embrace, you know, that, embrace that, that, that's pretty much the same thing. But instead, people hold on and... <laughs> Become anxious and get angry. Uh, yeah, get angry and, and all that stuff. Anyway, guys, we look forward to seeing you or actually being here with you for, on Friday. And uh, one of the sayings that we're saying now, if you can't live your truth, it's just not worth living. Well, good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. And take care. Have a great one. <laughs> Bye.